If you're like me and have the Epic Games launcher installed only because they release free games every week, then you might have played some of them and realized that these are just alright, mediocre games. Holy smokes. But of course, there's always a gem in the garbage. A rare AAA game or successful indie game that's thrown into the mix every once in a while. But most of these are just like, alright. Not exactly bad, but they aren't what you call a good game either. Except this one. Void Bastards is a science fiction first person shooter, but I personally like to call it a stealth horror game because very few games have got me so scared of a single enemy before. See, please Mr. Screw man, come on, we can talk about this storm. Quite honestly, I really hate stealth games. I've never enjoyed them, but for some reason, when I'm sneaking around in these ships, it actually feels like I'm avoiding real people who can see and hear me with the threat of death always looming over me. Rather than trying to sneak past a bunch of robots that might see me if the coding says so. The game is great at telling you exactly how loud you're being. Coughing and running makes these white lines and you can hear each step you take. Even the enemies make unique sounds that you can see on doors and start to memorize them to get past them better. Walking and crouching is pretty quiet and unless you and that screw are staring directly at each other in the eyes, then you'll probably be fine. Okay, come, okay, come on, we can talk about this, we can stop, <laughs> we can talk about this man. Unlike some dedicated stealth games that, in my experience, never seem to do this. An NPC just kind of sees you through a wall and you don't really know why or how, and then the game just turns into a shooter. Um, I can explain. It's the game's fault. This game's art style is just amazing. Now, for a little context, my favorite game of all time is Wii Punch-Out, and they both use something called cell shading, which is too complicated for someone of my brain capacity to understand, but in summary, it makes games go from this to this. And for some reason, I really like this. And adding the 2D comic book style to all the cutscenes, enemies, and weapons just really helps it all fit into this really unique art style that's really pleasing to look at. I'm sorry. Do you want to use the HR computer? Because that would require the HR computer to have not been stolen. The comic book style guns all look and function extremely differently. You got a pistol, a staple gun that's actually a shotgun, a long range poison dart gun, you even got a cat head on wheels that distracts enemies. Like, come on. But none of these weapons make you feel overpowered. There's always the sense that you are the underdog. You are the one fighting for your life with these shitty DIY weapons you made on your ship. Making each escape feel like you've just overcome the odds and are still somehow alive, just trying to find the next piece of equipment that will finally set you free from your prison sentence. But just don't talk about the ending. It just, it makes me sad. Speaking of things that make me sad, let's talk about one of my main dislikes of this game. Uh, the robots. Really? Now, each enemy is so varied and different and unique, but the robots don't seem to have this kind of effort put into them. And some of them do more damage than others. And some of them make you want to uninstall the game and throw it out the window. Some of them make you want to find whoever the fuck made it and just like, take them and bring them in a basement somewhere in fucking Alabama and then they'll never be found again. Okay, look, you probably don't believe me, but look at this robot. What do you think it's going to shoot? Alright, it shoots bullets. Now look at this robot. What do you think it's going to shoot? Not bullets, of course, dumbass. It's huge fucking, a huge fucking rocket. And I'm specifically talking about these types of robots. The Sekbot and the Peeber are really great additions. Seeing that Sekbot active sign is absolutely horrifying. You fucked up by letting the Peeber see you for too long, and now if you don't get out of here quick, the Sekbot is gonna do an impromptu colonoscopy on your ass. <laughs> Even though you are doing practically the same thing each time, dock on a ship, get food, gas, whatever else you can grab, and then leave before you can die. The game really makes you feel like each mission could be your last. For example, even in this mission, where there were literally no enemies, I refused to sprint anywhere because, you know, what if there's enemies? And I think this is due to the fact that the atmosphere in this game is able to make you feel this sense of constant danger and this looming anxiety when you play, and the fear that each mission is able to put into you makes each escape feel like a breath of fresh air. What the fuck? Even though all you really did was hide in a corner, grab a single piece of fuel, and leave while shutting and locking all the doors behind you. But the thing that really brings all of these elements together is the amazing voice acting. Failure to provide maximum cooperation to WCG guards is punishable by genital torture in accordance with what? subsection what? 484 F. What? Every single enemy has voice lines that gives them so much personality like the Juve, a little floating man whose favorite insult is Twatface, which ironically makes them so much more likable. The tourists are always talking about their bags and where the food court is, and they describe as an unsettled office order with little too much tea in his system.
These small voice lines help give so much personality to enemies that without them would have made them feel plain and boring. Each character is distinct and absolutely terrifying in its own way. The tourist, the weakest character in the game, can't see or hear you, but if you get close to them, they end up exploding and taking up a ton of health from you, making you fear them just a little bit, but enough to the point where you're always trying to avoid them. And yeah, doing a review in a relatively small 3-year-old game is not the best idea for the YouTube algorithm. But if you've got this game just sitting uninstalled with all the other mediocre free epic games, then you might want to install it, you know? Give it a try, because this game is definitely a gem in the garbage.